Save Our Planet conference on polar science concludes in Norway. The International Polar Year Scientific Conference, held from June 8th to 12th in Oslo, brought together over 2,000 scientists from 70 countries to share their findings. Jointly organised by the Research Council of Norway, International Polar Year Research Campaign, World Meteorological Organisation and others, the forum sought to advance understanding of rapid changes observed in the polar regions due to climate change. At the opening ceremony, His Royal Highness the Norwegian Crown Prince Hakon commended the cooperative endeavours of the participating scientists. The International Polar Year has been about people joining forces and working together to solve a task that could not have been solved by any of them alone. You should all be proud of being part of this effort. Among the government dignitaries in attendance was Norwegian Minister of Research and Higher Education, Tora Arsland, who noted the significance of studying the two regions that are highly indicative of global warming. The timing of the International Polar Year, both fortunately and sadly at the same time, has been very good. Climate change is a growing threat and a challenge we must see in a global perspective. Also present was His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, whose foundation of the same name committed to further valuable polar research. As new data from rapidly changing polar regions have so many implications, ranging yep, from ready. sea level rise to damaged ecosystems, participants sense the urgency of communicating their findings. In many of the areas that I've worked, we see huge changes in, in glaciers, we see changes in temperature. Um, we see changes in biodiversity in the situation is critical and we need to do something about it now. We can't delay. It's According to Dr. Stephen Chown, who was honoured during the meeting with the Marth T. Muse Prize for his work in Antarctica, individuals' lifestyle changes also play a vital role in the solution. We know that agricultural emissions through the growing of cattle and other livestock are quite substantial. So I think we need to think as individuals about how our lifestyles affect the planet we have. Our appreciation all concerned and dedicated polar scientists for your participation in this meeting. Let us heed your messages to join now and act sustainably to save the vital polar regions and our planet. Supreme Master Ching Hai has often reminded of the need to prevent the danger of warming gases, especially in the polar regions, as during an interview with The House magazine for the September 2009 edition. Our planet is on a dangerous course to pass an irreversible tipping point with disastrous consequences, like melting of the Arctic sea ice, which causes oceans to absorb more sunlight and speeds up melting and the melting of permafrost, which in turn releases toxic methane gas, uh, resulting in more warming of the atmosphere. We can't stop the climate change with all this methane hitting our planet and in turn hitting the Arctic, yes? Hitting the South and North Poles and in turn also hitting the permafrost. All the methane from the animals hit the ice, the ice melt and the permafrost exposed and melt as well. All this methane come out together with the animals' methane. We can't be safe if we still continue with animals raising practice.